What's up, this is T-Briz. Today I wanna to do a video where we make a drum beat that has delay and reverb on the snare to give ourselves a unique atmosphere and ambience in FL Studio. So let's get right into it. First, I'm gonna show you the drum beat that we're gonna to make today. Listen specifically to the delay and the reverb on the snare. I'm also gonna quickly play a snippet from a beat I made where this type of technique on the snare made sense and it fit into the atmosphere of the beat. Then we're gonna build that drum part there's gonna be a lot of little extra Easter eggs along the way because if you watch my videos, you know I can get a little bit long-winded. Stick around, check it out. We're gonna build this beat. Now let's listen to those two sound bites and then get into the tutorial. Here we go. So now let's get into the tutorial. We're gonna make the beat from scratch. We're gonna focus mainly on drums. Let me start a new project. Quickly, I'll show you a little trick that I always do when I start my projects. This track is my preview track, preview. I rename it and I'll color it. And what this preview track does is allows me to control the volume of preview sounds. For instance, if I'm over here in my browser and I click my kick, you see it comes up here. And more importantly, in my case, it controls the volume of the metronome, which sometimes just blares in my freaking ears and I need to turn it down. Like watch, if I hit play on this and the metronome is on, see it comes through the preview track and I can turn that down because man, that thing will blow your ears out sometimes, especially if you mix at lower volumes before you master and you're recording and then beep, 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 and it just beeps in your ear. It'll blow your eardrums out. Uh, the way you can set that up is you go to options, audio settings, and you have a preview mixer track. I set it to one. So FL Studio allows me to do that, but it never really adjusts these. So we're gonna put everything starting uh, one track shifted up ahead. After that side note, we're gonna take this kick. It's actually the kick we're gonna use during the beat. Let's put, put it on our kick track. Most of these sounds are coming from this Phono Loop TPL influential kit. In fact, I just Googled it and it looks like um, if you type in that exact term, you can find your way over to it and buy this kit if you're interested in these sounds that we're listening to today. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but just in case you like the sounds you're hearing today, I figured I would show you that. Let's drop the snare in here and the other sounds. And then there was a little tambourine action. I got that from a sound kit called Bluetooth Banger. Don't remember where I got it from, but go ahead and look that up if you want. Let's start making a quick drum pattern, okay? I'm gonna try to mimic the beat that we just listened to. Before we do that, let's set our tempo. The other track was 86, we're going by that. There was one hi-hat just keeping the one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Oh, and let's uh, control drag, shift drag, control drag, shift drag. I think uh, four bars should be enough for that, for what we're doing. Let's throw our snares in for now. I think it was just, let's see. So it's uh, every other. And on C5. Now I noticed that this snare sample, deconstructing this thing now, actually has some reverb on it already. It sounds cool and it has a vibe to itself already. That's good for sound selection. Let's fill the rest of these in. Cool, let's throw some kicks around that. Let's go to one fourth beat because I think we're gonna throw some. I think that's how it goes. Is it like this? Yeah, that's cool. And then let's control drag over this. Hold alt and mouse wheel down. You see that volume going down a little bit? So that can... All right, cool. And then let's just... Uh, let's not get too crazy. We'll just use that same kick pattern for the four bars as well. Cool, sounding good already. Uh, there was some hi-hats that had some rolls on them. Uh, let's see if we do this. I think it's... 
Yep, that's just about right. So we'll control drag over those and then we'll hit control B and allow it to just copy that pattern all the way out to our four bars. We'll keep hitting control B. Um, and now it sounds like this. I know on the other beat there was some like rolls, but I don't think we're gonna do that right now for the tutorial, let's just leave it. Now we're gonna add the tambourine, which I recall is the same exact pattern as this other hi-hat, just keeping the one, two, three, four. So let's uh, control A, control C to select all and copy. Let's go into the piano roll and then control V to paste. So now the tambourine. Cool. All right, we got a beat going. There's no mix yet. Let's get into that. First of all, I'm just gonna double click here so all these are highlighted. Start at insert number two, right click channel routing, route selected channel starting from this track. It's gonna start from that track and route my stuff out. Let's give these some better names over here. This is kick. I'm gonna rename these and fast forward. Looking good. Now I'm gonna show you a technique that I do with all my drums. I always group all my drums to a single fader before it hits the master. So that way, if I wanted to lower the entire kit, I mean, one way to do it is to, uh, you can hold control and drag, and then you can pull them down all at once like this, but uh, that's not the my favorite way to do it. I'd rather keep these selected. Let's go right here and right click this and say, route to this track only. And now all of these, if we click through, are routed to insert seven only. So let's rename insert seven and call it, uh, just group drums for now is good. Um, and I like to color these so that way my groups stand out. So we have a group drums and all that does is make it so I can pull the volume of the entire drum kit down from one fader. Now it's makes life easier. In addition to that, say we wanted to add effects to the entire drum kit as a whole, whether it be compression or some sort of reverb, whatever you want, we could do that. We're not doing that today though. Let's move forward with this tutorial and get the effects going on the snare. Now I like the sound of the snare, but I also liked it a little bit better pitched up. So just to point that out, if we go into the snare sound, you see the range is bumped up to four and this knob is turned to the right to just about four o'clock. You know, there's no real way to tune drums. You just kind of use your ear and whatever sounds right is what you go with. And I like the way this sounds like this versus how it came stock. just a matter of taste so we're gonna go with that next let's get started with some reverb on the snare we know the sample already has a little bit of reverb so we probably don't need much extra select our snare insert we're gonna use this insert over here insert eight we're gonna right click and we're gonna say side chain to this track let's rename this track snare rvb for reverb if we hit play you see nothing's really happening yet that's because we have to send it there. Now that we've sidechained it, we're going to go over to the FX slots for the snare. We're going to select fruity send because we're going to send that signal over to the insert that we just sidechained this to. So we could send that signal there. Now, if we hit play, you see the signal is coming through just like we wanted it to. Okay. And I just changed the color of these tracks. So they stand out a little bit more for this video. We're going to be focusing on the ones that are in teal. Now that we have a snare signal coming through, we want it to be reverb and reverb only. We want the snare sound to be the snare sound, and we want the snare reverb sound to be just the reverb only. So we're going to go and we're going to select a reverb effect. I'm going to use Valhalla Vintage Verb, but you can use the regular FL Studio um, stock reverb plugin if you want. Uh, the most important thing is that the mix knob is turned up to 100. Let me show you how to do that in the stock reverb plugin, just because, just in case you're using that one. Fruity Reverb 2, for instance, you would want to take the dry signal and turn it all the way down and turn the wet signal all the way up or tune it to your liking. But most importantly, keep the dry signal all the way down. That is the signal of the snare drum sample, and the wet is the signal of the reverb only. Very important. I'm going to delete that one and go with Valhalla Vintage Verb because I love this plugin. I do recommend it. Again, not sponsored. Not sponsored by anybody. Just a small little channel. So now that we have our reverb plugin, if we hit play, we should see the signal coming through snare reverb, but 
oh wow, it's really loud. And if we solo it out, it is just the reverb. You see that? And now this is what the advantage of having this on its own fader is we can pull the reverb down. This is the way I like to do it. Um, there's other ways to do it, but this is my favorite. So let's let's dial this in a little bit. That sounds cool. I like it right there for now. And I'm going to go a step further with this, and I'm going to actually add a parametric EQ on this. And let's take a look at what that signal looks like, just the reverb signal. So you can see that there is a lot of activity in the mid-range. Uh, over here, things can get a little bit muddy, especially with reverbs, because they tend to hang around in the background of the mix. And I'm going to cut some of those. Let's... Uh, Let's dial that in a little bit. So now we can fully cut a lot of those mid and mid lows, the lower mids, and leave just the high side. That sounds pretty good. And now you can hear the difference. If we reset. Now back. Especially if you have headphones in, you will hear the difference from cutting those lower frequencies from the reverb. And I think that's good enough for today's video to just cut that for now. And uh, I'm liking the sound that we're getting so far. Cool. That's it for the reverb. Now we're getting to what I think is the most interesting part of the snare is we're going to add the delay to it. We're going to automate the delay. So that way the delay even has a little bit of a bounce of variation to it. Let's get into that. All right, we're going to do the same thing we did with sending a signal to the snare reverb track. We're going to send a signal to the snare delay track. We're going to select our snare insert number five. We're going to right click over on the bottom insert nine right here. We're going to side train to this track. And then on our snare insert over in the FX slots, we're going to add another fruity send. And we are going to send to... Well, it's named insert nine for now. Let's just click that and close this. And uh, while we're at it, we'll rename insert nine to snare delay or DLY stands for delay. Little abbreviation. We'll test it out. We should see the snare signal coming through because it's the only thing that we're sending here for now. There it is. We can see it getting a signal. Now we want this insert to be the delay signal only, no snare dry signal, all wet delay. So let's go into the FX slots, slot number one, we'll put on Fruity Delay 3. The default settings are currently applied, but let's do first things first, we're going to turn that dry signal all the way down. We only want the wet, and let's just hit play and see what we got. All right, well, that's actually kind of cool if you were trying to do something like that. But uh, we're going to dial in these settings because I want it to sound different. We're going for a different type of delay sound, not this one. Specifically, what I want to change first is the timing. Because if you notice, if I solo the snare out, we just listen to the snare. The delay is sort of on the one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one. So we can see it popping four. We don't want that. We want the time of that delay to be shorter. I think I'm going to dial it down. Let's start on this dot. Sometimes it's good to start on the dots and the dots seem to sync up with the tempo when you have the tempo sync checked off here. So let's hit play, see what that sounds like. All right, that's not bad. It's a little too loud too, the wet signal. So let's bring that down. Let's put it back in the mix with the rest of the kit. Feel it out as a whole. There it is. Now we're really starting to dial in the delay. And we really didn't tweak much as far as these settings go. We changed the time and uh, pretty much just left everything else in default mode. But let's add a little bit of automation to give the delay a little bit of variation and some bounce. Like I was talking about in the beginning of the video. And then we'll wrap it up. We're going to drag our pattern out here with our drums that we have not renamed yet. It's still just called pattern one. That's okay. It's just a tutorial. Let's, uh, so let's think about what we're going to automate. First of all, 
we can play with things and then automate them after, which is something I like to do. Uh, for instance, first, I'm going to play with the volume. I like where the volume's at now, so let's just copy that value for whatever reason. Uh, we'll hit play. See, I already kind of like that. It bounces uh, every other snare. There's a little bit of delay. Then there is more delay. I tend to draw these in by hand. So let's just do that. We're going to right click this. We're going to do create an automation clip. Boom. Our automation clip is right there. Oh, uh, it's a little bit high. So you know what? Good thing I copied that value. Let's just paste the value. It can actually paste that volume value that we copied from here. We could paste it right on here. So let's paste that like this where it was originally. And then we're going to do... I guess we'll work within this first bar and let's add a couple more grid lines here so we can fine tune this and it's a, the other snare hits right about here and we're going to bring that volume up during that part. So let's right click to insert our marker here. We're going to pull it up to make the volume go up. And actually, let's see if we change this to hold. What does that do? That's kind of cool. It adds some variation. I think maybe, uh, well, we don't want it on hold anymore. Let's make this back to smooth and let's pull it down just a little bit. All right, that's cool. I'm feeling that and it's good. And now what we could do is just delete the other part of this. I'm using shortcut keys here. So I'm going to hit B to get my brush tool. And then I'm going to right click with my brush tool to remove this. Then we're just going to left click on this pattern. Uh, and then we're going to left click and hold that down and just paste it out like this. And let's see what this drum pattern sounds like now with a little bit of automated. Uh, we literally just automated the volume, which is sort of controlling how much of the delay we can hear. And that's going to give us this effect where the first snare hits, there's some delay. And then when that second one hits, we get a burst of delay towards the end of the bar. Let's listen. <laughs> That's cool, and I think it brings some character and some life to the drums. It's got a little bit of extra bounce. Speaking of bounce, I think it's time for me to bounce on this video. Covered a lot of stuff for a video that's just supposed to be about reverb and delay. I tend to go on a bunch of tangents, and maybe I'm a little bit long-winded, but I hope it helped, and I hope you guys learned something. Let me know in the comments if you like the style of these videos, if you like the content, if you'd like to see more of what you'd like to see. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, don't forget to like and sub. More FL Studio tutorials on the way. Thank you very much. Have a great one, and I'll see you soon. Bye.